So if we could ask Han Hanin Zawabi to come forward, please. Good afternoon to everybody, the audience, to the members of the jury. And good afternoon to South Africa. Uh, my name is Hanin Zobi. I am one of 1,200,000 Palestinians living in Israel, has an Israeli citizenship. I supposed to be a walking evidence about the democracy of Israel because I'm also a member of the Israeli parliament. I am a member of the Knesset. I have the right to vote. I have the right to be represented in the Knesset and to represent my people and the political vision I believe. But on the contrary, I think we all, the 1,200,000 Palestinians living in Israel, are a clear evidence about the, racist, the racism of the Israeli system by such. We are an evidence that the problem is not occupation, that, that the uh, racist dominance, the system of racist dominance of Israel is not just re related to occupation. It is not the case that Israel is a democracy by itself which occupies the Palestinians in 67. We are the evidence, the Palestinians who live in Israel, we are the evidence that the problem is an integral part of the Israeli system. It's something that we, mu we must deal and we must analyze the political and the legal system of Israel. It's something to do with the definition of Israel. We are the evidence. More than the Palestinians who live in the occupied territories. And ironically, we, the forgotten, pe the forgotten part of the Palestinian people, we whom everybody till few years ago forgot us and treat us as an internal Israeli issue, we are now defined by Israel as a strategic threat, not less than. Not Israel don't, doesn't define the Palestinians in the West Bank or Gaza as strategic threat. But in an official discourse, in the Israeli official discourse starting from 2007, the uh, head of the in Israeli intelligence, Yuval Disken, has described the Palestinian side Israel, of course, who, th those who don't accept the rules of the game as a strategic threat. So, during these two days, we spoke a lot about the racist dominance, the, the system of Israel, which is a system also of racist dominance. And we talked about um, a slightly different system of, of uh, uh, dominance related to uh, Jerusalem, West Jerusalem, uh, East Jerusalem, West Bank, and inside Israel. But I think we should also ask the question, what stands beyond this, this system of dom dominance? What is the justification? What is, what is the aim? And we must, uh, we, we must address this question. We must raise this, this question and we must answer this question. And the answer is, what is stand behind this system of dominance is the definition of Israel as Jewish state. Even those of Israel, and you can, you can find members of the Knesset, when you, when the, cannot avoid admitting that there is discrimination, there is racism, they would say to you, okay, but we have an ethical justification for that. And the justification is a Jewish state. We, the Jews, deserve a Jewish state, even if it is on the expense of the Palestinian people. So this is what we should tackle. This is what, what stands behind all this racist, apartheid, discrimination. And we, the citizen, is a strategic threat because we reveal that. More than the Palestinian, my people in Gaza Strip and the West Bank, we, are, we reveal the contradiction between 
Jewish state, and democracy. Those who live in the occupied territories, because they are not citizens, they cannot just be an evidence of the internal contradiction between citizenship, between democracy, and between Jewish state. This is just with the 1 million 18% of the Israeli society. So we say our struggle, why we are such a threat? Because our struggle is revealing this. Now, what's the meaning of Jewish state? It is, Jews with, with, uh, is, it is a state with a Jewish majority. So you must do everything in order to preserve this majority. It is a state which serves the Jews, which give privileges to the Jews. It's a state with it, it is controlled by the Jews. So of course it will be a racist state. <laughs> what else it can be? If you justify Israel as a Jewish state, then at the same time you are giving legitimation to a racist state. And in the same time we are talking about Israel or about the Jewish regime as a racist regime, Israel is making its effort in order to ask all the states in the world to recognize it as a Jewish state. At the same time, we are revealing the racist, the racist uh, essence of the Jewish state. Israel <laughs> making all of its effort in order to ask the states, also I think the state of South Africa, to recognize it as a Jewish state. I think there are three states in the world which recognize Israel as a Jewish state. State. But absurd, in, in, in some absurdic way, what makes racism inside Israel diluted, Runit, more diluted, yeah, is a crime which is more ugly than racism, which make, which make it less evidence, and which dilute, what, what diluted the racism, it's a crime which is much more ugly than racism. It's an ethnic cleansing. It was the ethnic cleansing of my people in 1948. When Israel has get rid from 85% of my people, then it was more easy to control the 15%. And it was more easy to tame, tame, Beulo? To tame the people, my people whom remained in the historical Palestine. So it is not about occupation. The Palestinian cause didn't start it in 1967. It started in 1948. And struggling for a sovereign state in the West Bank and Gaza Strip doesn't end the struggle because we need equality. I didn't immigrate to Israel, excuse me. It was Israel who immigrated to me. <laughs> now, what makes so this uh, ex uh, expelling, expelling, not rod, my people, has made, made the racism system, the racist system, more sophisticated, more clever, and more aggressive. And I think what you can find in Israel, which you cannot find in South Africa, is three very crucial features. The first one, it is not the matter that, the, that Israel has confiscated my land. No, Israel has confiscated my land and it started to define me as the invader of the land. I called in the, they call us in the Knesset, in the courts, in the media, the invaders of the land. When they confiscate the land in the Negev or in the Galilee, even not to talk, I will not talk anything about the West Bank and Gaza Strip. When they confiscate our land in the Galilee and the Negev, they said they, they are going to redeem the land. Redeem, I don't know this word, I ask about it. Redeem the land. Salvation from me, the indigenous people there. So it is, it, they are, they, it is not about stealing the land. No, it's about stealing my homeland, my relation with my homeland. They are trying to transmit, to rewrite history. They don't like history. They don't like to read history, uh, what happened before 1948, and that we were there, the Palestinians. They like more to write history. 
and they and, and they, they say that I am a risk. They must reserve the land. So the, re, the, 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 the crime is not just really just to steal the land. They are trying to redefine my relation with my homeland. It is not my homeland anymore. I cannot claim it. The real history, I am the invader of this land. And when we ask the ministers in the Knesset, why you confiscate the land, why you confiscate the land, you know what the last answer of the Minister of Infrastructure, why? You are the Salibiyin al Judud. Translate, please. Yeah? We are Salibiyin al Judud. So this is the answer we got. So I don't think this, this elements exist in South Africa. <coughs> So how they, how they cancel, cancel um, our relation with the sea, um, landscape? They just change the names Hamilton, of the... Can yeah. you... Thanks. Okay, two minutes. They just change the name of the, the streets, the cities, the villages. They Judy highs um, not just Judaize the land, Hebrew names, all the street names, all the road names are Hebrew one. Uh, a tourist, if you visit Israel, you will, difficult, uh, you will find difficulty to understand that there are Arabs here, that there are Palestinians here. They are changing the Arabic town names into Hebrew transcript. All the train station, everything is in Hebrew, if you want to travel to uh, enter Kufur Qari, uh, even Nazareth, the, now the biggest uh, I have been born in Nazareth, you will not find a uh, sign for Nazareth unless you are maybe one kilo close to the town. So changing the landscape, it's not stealing the land, it's stealing the homeland. And well, how we call us, we are not Palestinians. Someone asked yesterday from the jury, they call us, non-Jew or Israeli Arabs or minorities. So I live, look my situation, I live, I am a non-Jew living in a Jewish state. They call me non-Jew and they define the state as a Jewish state. So I have nothing to do, I have no uh, internal, no integral uh, rights. My citizenship is conditioned, is conditioned to accept loyalty. It is not conditioned to respect the laws in Israel. It is conditioned to my loyalty to Zionism. And this is you will not find in Gaza and in the 67, in the West Bank. I must, after all this, the nation of identity, I must be loyal to Zionism. I must accept that. I must say, yes, yes, this is your own homeland. I have nothing to do. I am an invader. So just the last two years, in Israel there is 30, till the Netanyahu government, there was 34 laws legally discriminate against the Palestinians. The citizens, 34 till 2009. Now we stop counting. Maybe during the last two years, maybe Lea knows, that have passed or suggested more than 20. So, so it is not the de facto racism, uh, racism, it's the URI, and it's by definition a racism. We must look at the definition of that, that state. I am struggling for a state for all of its citizens. It's very simple. But I am a strategic threat because I am struggling and my, my party is struggling for a state for all of its citizens. So what is the strategic threat of Israel? Democracy. Democracy in Israel is a strategic threat. Thank you, um, Hanin. Yeah, you will lose. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, can deal, you can deal with some of it in the answers to the questions. Michael? Yeah. Um, <coughs> yes, a question. A very clear and impassioned exposition. So the question I have to raise is this. You're now described as an invader. You're described as a new crusader. Mm -hmm. You're described as a strategic threat. Mm -hmm. So that the double-barreled question is this. First of all, and it's a personal question, what is it that you fear most for your own security 
within the next six months. Secondly, what are the most important, we've heard a lot about bills, and Leah told us about some of those, the most important acts, legislation, that have already become law, uh, you've talked about 34, 20, whatever, what are the most important ones that actually target you as a Palestinian within Israel? Okay. You will not count the time I'm searching for the answer. No, no, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously a politician, yes. <laughs> okay. What, what has frightened me most personally, actually personally, I don't know if I understand the question. Personally, nothing. Politically, I am frightened. Personally, I am not the type of person to be easily frightened. But um, um, the most important uh, laws, the, the 43 laws which legally discriminate against the Palestinian, I think 43, I'm not sure, are most of them about citizenship, land, and education. According to the goal of the education law, I cannot study my history. I cannot, as Leah said, commemorate in Nakba, but in the education system, I, we cannot study Mahmoud Darwish, the poem of the, our Sha'ar, Mahmoud Darwish. During the uh, Nakba uh, and the, the Second Intifada, the heads of the, or the, heads of the um, um, schools receive a direction, directions from the Ministry of Education not to teach and not to speak about what happened in the Nakba or Land Day or the Second Intifada. Uh, second of all, your second question. There is two very important pills. Pill to protect the values of the state of Israel. And I think another two, which says in some way or another, if you don't recognize Israel as a Jewish, you will be illegal, you will be persecuted, you will violate the law if you don't recognize Israel as a Jewish and democratic state. So the state acts not as a state, it acts as a um, political party. I must be loyal to the ideology of the Usually you are loyal, you respect the laws. But if, you, if I want to be accepted in the party, I must be loyal to the ideology. I must accept the ideology. In Israel, you must accept the ideology of Zionism in order not to be persecuted as uh, an association or as a political party. Uh, and my party has been disqualified from entering the election because of this bill three times. 2003, I think, 2006, 2009, every time. Why? Because in our program, we said state for all of its citizens. Because of this, we are illegal. Usually racist parties, usually democracies, disqualify racist parties. In Israel, they disqualify democratic parties. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, well, I, I just would like to know if you can make available to the members of the jury all of the legislation that's been referred to by Leah as well as yourself. Do, uh, is there a place that we can find that ah, to enter into the official first record? First, it's on the Allah website. Fantastic. And I have delivered to the jury a document of 16 pages that I you wrote everything, almost. Okay, so, thank uh, you. Okay? Okay. Thank two more, sorry, just two more questions, please. It's an Adela website. Ha um, Hanin, yeah. um, you used the word persecution within Israel. Do you think this is the crime of per persecution within what, Israel proper? What's happening to me? Yes. I'm not a lawyer, but I participated in Marmara. I, it was a pure um, political uh, activity. And uh, besides the incitement in, inside the Knesset, the, th the threat to withdraw, first of all, they withdraw my diplomatic passport. 
so I am without a diplomatic passport. The threat to me to uh, strip me from my um, immunity and f from my citizenship. So they are, w whenever I ask them, please, I want to go to the court. It is me who want to hakimko. No, to trail you, but till now there is no, they didn't uh, file, they didn't uh, end the procedures, and I am waiting. <laughs> I'm and running. enjoying the political incitement inside the Knesset. <laughs> um, thanks. I would just like to come to the question of the demands of the Palestinian people within Israel itself. Mm. And with the demands really long-term objective long-term objective so we do have the question of possibility of two states yeah. but how would you inside israel see this and that long-term objective yeah okay if you ask me personally i i don't think that the uh, resolution the solution of two states is, av yani is available now. And I don't care about two states or one state. I care about values. I don't stick about, I don't want to be separated. I have um, a wonderful Jewish also uh, friends. And what I am care about, about are values, values of justice, values of freedom, values of equality. It can be done within two states. It can be done with, within one state. First of all, full withdrawal from the territories which Israel has occupied in 1967, dismantling all the settlements and dismantling uh, and withdrawal from East Jerusalem and dismantling the settlements of Jerusalem, full return of the ref Palestinian refugees and democratic states could be two states, it, put, it could be one state. I don't like the idea of separation. The idea of, uh, of uh, what, what drives us and the, our aim is that the Palestinians has the right to live in their homeland, all of them. And even, I would say, even there was no justification for the Zionist project. It was no justification to have a Jewish state on my homeland, but now, there are genera Israeli generations whom didn't know any other homeland. We want to live with them, but not within a Jewish state, not within a racist state. Thank you um, very much.